Ladies and gentlemen, very good evening and welcome to yet another show of Ground Zero Everyday Leaders. It's uh, episode number four of season three. And today we have yet another guest who's going to uh, energize us, motivate us and tell us about his life story. The show uh, precisely uh, is meant to encourage the youth uh, to get closer to the trait of leadership. That's the whole show. And that's why it's it's called Every, Ground Zero Everyday Leaders. And uh, we get excited when we hear from the young crowd that, sir, it's a, it's a show that kind of uh, tells us a lot about leaders. It, it helps us to improve and engage with our own leadership skills. And that is why it gives me immense pleasure to be hosting it time in and time out. And today's guest is going to just show us another way another path, another direction towards uh, that uh, particular objective. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have the, the guest today who comes uh, from the city of Mumbai. He's a Mumbai car most of his life. And uh, he's a person who brings in uh, the required energy into any room. And I've experienced that for sure. He also uh, mentions in a very special way, in fact, he challenges the entrepreneurs that you can double your business if you have the will within a time slot that you intend to. Please allow me to welcome Mr. Shankar Vishwanath to the show. Shankar Saab, Namaste and welcome, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Alan. Namaste. Very, very good evening. Pleasure to be here and looking forward. Thank you, sir. It's, it's, it's an honor, Shankar. Thank you very much. Same here. Well, uh, I usually start the show by asking uh, my guests about, uh, you know, a little bit of history, a little bit of their childhood stories, and, and so on and so forth. I would like to have a little bit of twist in today's show. Uh, and the twist is, uh, if, if Shankar had to describe himself, how would you do that? That's a great question, Alan, to begin with. Uh, so you said Shankar, and the name has seven alphabets s h a n k e r so my story is in that let me put it that way i started my life in 1967 was born in a very small village in kerala known as attingal very very small village so that s is for that started my life from kerala attingal and then h got added see how the divine will works we migrated to Hyderabad. So my initial schooling days till mid of eighth standard happened in Hyderabad. A is academics. Academically, I am qualified as a chartered accountant and an MBA in social development. N, I'm very naive to the worldly wisdom that prevails. A lot of people talk about a lot of things. I wonder how much they can they can take in and how can they retain so much. So I'm very naive to all that wisdom. K, I think God felt this gentleman has some knightly qualities. So he put in some more knightly qualities and made me a teacher. E, I'm very empathetic to others because I, I strongly feel that in order to get others to be empathetic with you, you can't demand it, you can't command it. You have to be empathetic towards them. And R is that I reinvented myself at the age of 48 to move away from the corporate rat race to what I'm doing today, that is into the LND space. And the reinvention still continues. So that's Shankar for you in a nutshell. I love cooking. I love traveling. I love playing cricket. I love singing Bollywood songs. I love playing outdoor sports. I'm an outdoor person. And I love most of all practicing silence. So you see me into these long bouts of silence. So wow. that's right. And, and there seems to be a lot of these things that I've picked up from the little time you spent together already. Uh, certainly, I know the talent of singing and uh, we'll keep that. Probably it requires an entire 30 minutes show to explain the talent. But sir, uh, you know, we, we, we've seen that. We've experienced uh, the singing talent in you. We know about your uh, your cricketing skills and uh, the story there. We'll, we'll probably have touch base on those subjects as we go along. I've seen very few chartered accountants join in to the profession of being a full-time LND person. 
you know, you, you develop your skill today, you're a business coach, uh, and uh, there's so much that you give back to the society in terms of empowering the world. A CA to an l and world. So this happened in uh, 2014, you know, 29 years. I take even article ship, which I started in, in 1985 as my corporate journey, because we all know how the article ship goes when it comes to the CA curriculum. It is really grueling. So my journey started in 85 and 29 years of non-stop work, kind of, you know, I would say put in a, a mental and a physical strain on me. So 2014 was that year. There was a personal issue in the family. I, I wouldn't want to talk about that, but that also had to be settled. And, and I, I guess that was the last nail in the coffin. And so here was the fruit right to fall from the tree. And the time came and it just dropped off, I guess. And I was very, very clear, Alan, what I don't want to do. I don't want to get back to the corporate world. What am I going to do? No idea. And I'm a believer, strong believer that the will of the divine does not take you where the grace of the divine cannot protect you. So it is the will of the divine that today I am in the LND space, exploring, learning. I have become a liar, you know, I call myself a liar. So there's a little acronym there where you learn first. You have to become aware if you have to be in this space. So you learn, you internalize it, and then you apply it, and then you reteach it to somebody else. Don't keep it with you. No point in keeping the knowledge with you. Give it off. That's how the journey started and it still continues. So that's how I moved from being a, a chartered accountant to an LND professional. Well, I know uh, you do these step up series and uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. But uh, I think there was a mention of uh, a quote that you said. You said you can't, uh, you can't change the wind, but you yes. can certainly adjust your sail. I think that's one of the lines that I picked up in one of, one of your excellent step up series. And uh, before we go there, uh, Chakraji, you know the question that comes to mind. There must be reasons, obviously, you just mentioned about uh, uh, something personal. That's fine. And we leave that aside. But, you know, entrepreneurship is a big jump, you know. And, and what was your experience before that? I mean, working in a corporate life. I mean, how did the skills that you have presently, uh, you know, there must have been something that kind of groomed you into this, uh, if yes. not, uh, you know. I, I know you talk about the divine touch, but uh, just a bit of your uh, experience working before being an entrepreneur. All right. So this, as I said, started before, um, started from 85, when my article ship started. And I went through a grueling phase during the CA journey. I failed 10 times in that phase as a CA, before I became a CA. And having qualified in 1990, then the corporate journey started with a professional firm, one of the big fours in this country. And just to get in there was an achievement because having failed 10 times, three rounds of grueling interviews, and then to get in there was an experience in itself. That's how the journey started. Worked with them for about six years, uh, learned a lot about auditing various, various organizations, uh, ranging from FMCG to ad agencies, to pharma, to real estate, to, you know, a lot of, lot of work I did there for them. In six years, I reached a situation where the next step would have been a partner in that organization. So I, I grew to that extent in six years. And I had a discussion with the, with the senior most partner, checking with him whether they would promote me to a partner. Mm -hmm. They said, no, we have a rule that we will promote only London CAs to become partners. Okay, so what next? Aspiring guy. Every, every young fellow is aspiring and, and you're always aspiring in life. So at about 26, 28 that is the age when I got an opportunity to get into the corporate world, from the professional world to the corporate world. So I joined an advertising agency, again, one of the top most in the world, I would say, probably the number one in the world. I worked with them for two years. In hindsight, if, you, if I were to tell, probably the biggest mistake I made when I left them in 90. 98. But yes, what the hell? I mean, young blood, aspiring, want to achieve stuff. So there came a position which was like an associate vice president 
finance and operations, the salary, the numbers, the car, whatever, you name it, and it was all there. So I fell for it. Stayed there exactly for one year in that organization. That was also an advertising agency. And then 1999, my daughter was born. So I quit that job without a job in hand. So I experienced being unemployed very early in life, I would say. Then came another opportunity with another advertising agency where one of my, you know, he, so he was an acquaintance and a friend, I would say. He had joined them and he said, my plate is already full, Shankar. Why don't you come? You have such a good experience in the ad agency. Come, come and join us. So I joined them, continued till 2005. The aspiration was there to be a CFO by the age of 40. So that happened in 2005 when I became the CFO in an automation control solutions company, completely different from advertising to automation control solutions. So that is basic stuff over, basic aspiration over in life, goals achieved, continued for another 10 years, uh, again grew to be a regional finance director, handled 64 countries, I mean companies across the Middle East and North Africa, came back to India in 2010. Life had taken a full circle back to the profession because I was here in terms of salary in the UAE, dropped back here when I came back to India, had to restart. The journey started again and the best way was to get back to the profession. So joined another professional big six in this country. He got a lot of knowledge in terms of, you know, GST and service tax and indirect tax, again, financial accounting, auditing, internal auditing, a lot of stuff. And then what happened in 2014, I just told you. But this journey, which I had taken, one thing I had realized was I was a step knee all the time. And one may say a step knee is hardly used. It is used only when there is puncture. Mm. But that, that was a grace. That is a divine grace. The divine wanted me to be in places where the corporates felt there is a need to sort out issues. So I became that man. If there is an issue, put this guy. This guy will sort it out and come back. So proud of that. And 2014... I, I was dragging myself literally out of the bed day in and day out, traveling five hours a day. It is taking a toll. So I said, enough is enough. I think if I can put 14, 15 hours with somebody else, I can do it for myself. And that's how the journey started <laughs> into well, the entrepreneurship. Uh, it, it is, it is uh, an amazing uh, story to listen to. And you can actually relate it to, Again, uh, you know, you may often wonder during the show, uh, the lines that I've picked up from your step up series, the little that I've left, or the, the little that I've read so far, uh, you say, don't uh, let little things bother you, you're meant to do bigger things. And I think uh, you recognize that in the end of uh, the vicious circle that you're kind of uh, traveling through in the in the corporate world. And, uh, and, and, uh, and Shankarji, what the question that drives me straight away is, uh, you know, since I've mentioned Step Up series, is uh, you can actually read through the lines and the uh, the business uh, coaching that you do through your, your messages, uh, that you're very strong in conveying the importance of emotional intelligence. And uh, I think that's not everyone's forte. Uh, people who have experienced such journeys uh, can relate it, can also convey it, and you convey it the best. Uh, so the importance of emotional intelligence is something that uh, not everybody can drive. We see that in your, your quotes. Um, right. So emotional intelligence, five parts to it. Every speaker, everybody in this world will say there are five parts to it. Self-awareness, self-regulation. Understanding others, empathy, and motivation. And can you see this in a coach? If a coach is not self-aware, how is he or she going to coach others? Is the first question that came to my mind when I started relating emotional intelligence to coaching. Number one, self-awareness, being aware of your own emotions and the impact it is likely to have on others is a very important part of coaching. As a coach, you probably cannot display your emotions all the time. Not that you don't have to, but if you display it too much, the game is over. Somebody has come to you with an intention to learn something. And if you are emotional and if you keep displaying that emotion all the time, 
so that's the first lesson i learned second is as a coach many a times you will feel like giving a lot of advice and coaching is not about advising coaching is about making the coachee understand that all the resources are there within them so you have to be a lot of self regulate yourself you have to manage that inner urge to give a lot of advice don't do it so again comes emotional intelligence and then comes understanding others so let me tell you a little story you've heard the launch of the indian satellite rohini in 1980 18th of july it was launched successfully but 1979 it failed and when it failed 40 seconds before the launch of the satellite apj abdul kalam sir with the six scientists were standing in the launch room data is coming through saying that it will fail so they pause the launch and sir asks his six advisors what should we do so they all said it's a minor fuel tank issue when the first separation happens everything will be fine okay he overruled the computer and said launch it so the first separation happened beautifully but when the second separation was to happen and the the launcher was to be put into the orbit along with the satellite and then the third separation happens and the satellite goes into the orbit it all splintered and went and fell into the bay of bengal imagine the indian media how it is we all know lot of human cry was created and abdul kalam ji in his book vision 2020 writes that his heart was in his mouth because he had never failed in life before and he didn't know how to handle this failure he was resting in the room and he finds that the chairman of the indian space research organization comes in says come on let's go for the press conference <laughs> imagine he says my life is over i thought that's it i'm going to be made a scapegoat period so they go to the the place where the the press conference is organized and the man tells him hold on today you're not going up i'm going up his his chairman goes up and says hey press you have won i have lost it was me who took the call to launch the satellite and and apj sir says i had tears in my eyes what do we learn from that when there is a negative situation as a leader you have to step in and help your team next year they launched in 1980 and it seems he just gave a phone call and said go with your team and handle the press now this gentleman dr satish dhawan is a is a great example of leadership and understanding others that's the third trait of emotional intelligence and that's one of the traits a coach needs to have understand others don't jump in and don't start advising and be empathetic and empathy is nothing but putting yourself into the shoes of others feeling the pain and doing something to alleviate the pain don't elevate it they are already in pain and how can you do that you have to remove your own shoes first and when i say remove your own shoes that's nothing but keeping your biases aside when you're coaching don't bring any stereotype any bias when you're doing coaching and last if you're not motivated enough from within what will you motivate others whether they are in business or whether they are a leader or whether in personal life you have to be motivated from within to be able to motivate others so that's how emotional intelligence for me fits into coaching entrepreneurs leaders anybody else beautiful but uh Shankar ji that's a book in itself uh, those few uh, lines yes. that you just quoted i mean we can uh, write we can write a book yes absolutely and and, and i think that uh, tells a lot and post pandemic i think the world has recognized empathy to be one of the most powerful tools yes. that uh, a leader can have in him and uh, one you. of the strongest leaders that we see today in terms of uh, you know public presence is the one who has empathy and i think that really signifies uh, the importance of uh, of that particular trait in a leader uh you know you you spent a lot of things there and uh, you know there's a lot of uh, lessons we learned from uh, the little you told about in emotional intelligence a vast subject by itself yes uh, for another day for sure but what are your important life lessons in this uh, little journey we are all in, encountering together uh, shankar ji Yes. the first lesson i i'll share five lessons okay for shortage of time or whatever but i'll share only five lessons we can go on and on but five lessons the first lesson i will tell you through a quote of 
APJ sir. And that was my journey into the CA world when I failed 10 times. When I read that quote, I had tears in my eyes. It says, fail is nothing but first attempt in learning. Yeah. Suddenly, I felt a little proud that I had failed 10 times. <laughs> first mm-hmm. attempt in learning. So that is the first lesson. Don't be afraid to fail. Be afraid not to try. That's important. If you try, there is a chance that you'll succeed. So that is the first lesson. Second lesson is something known as fear. When I talk to entrepreneurs, one of the biggest thing I notice is fear which holds them back. And fear by definition, and a lot of leaders and others talk about it as false evidence appearing real. There's really nothing there. It's all in the mind there. So there can be real fear and unreal fear. Real fear, somebody puts a gun to your head. That's real fear because you're going to die. You can't do anything about it. A plane is going to crash. Pilot has announced it. Real fear. But many a times, we have created fear in our mind. And the only way to come out of that, combat that, is through fear. So I call it as beat fear with fear. That's the second lesson. And what is fear? There are two options available. You can either forget everything and run away. So forget everything and run. That is also fear. Or you can face everything and rise above it. That is also fear. So you have a choice. How do you want to beat fear with fear? So second lesson is that. Third lesson is that we are all in our comfort zone. And just outside of the comfort zone we have learned is the success zone. So if you have to step up, get out of your comfort zone. Do things that you have never done before. And that is what happened in 2014. My first training program, Alan, fetched me 3,000 rupees for a whole day, eight hours of training, 3,000 rupees. Standing there, a man with 29 years of corporate work experience, with all the knowledge, a chartered accountant and all that, gets paid 3,000 rupees a day. Wow, great. The feeling took me back to when I started my article ship, when I got 150 rupees stipend per month. And I told myself, what knowledge did you have at that point of time? Is the same knowledge that you had in learning and development industry. So it's important not to lose it, even if you're starting at a low level. That is just the start. Today, it has reached a very, very high level. So that's the third lesson that get out of your comfort zone. The fourth lesson is that have a clear mindset, don't have a negative mindset. When I say negative mindset, let me give you an example. When I was working, when I started my career and my salary was not great, a friend of mine asked me 20,000 rupees. And he said, just give it to me, Shankar. You don't have to worry. All the EMIs and everything I'll pay. Don't worry. So I gave the 20,000 rupees. When the day came, that money was not coming through. And I had taken a loan and given. So I had to keep repaying. So remember that. That day, I formed an opinion about not lending money to anybody else. It may be a false opinion. Maybe that gentleman had a problem genuinely. But in my mindset, I have created a negative mindset to say that don't lend money to anybody in friendship. Maybe a wrong mindset, isn't it? Think about it. So that's the fourth lesson. And fifth lesson is that in this journey that you're taking, never ever look back because if you look back you will think i have not made any progress always look at how much you have achieved already and don't don't worry about where you have to still go enjoy the journey that is important like how you know we we say that if you have to go to kashmir you don't enjoy after going to kashmir you enjoy the journey that's more important if you enjoy the journey the destinations will come so these are my five lessons, Alan, from this world. Well, wonderfully put. And, uh, you know, I, I, we could deliberate on these five things that you just mentioned. Yes. Uh, but I would only pick up that, uh, and I would like to take this opportunity to bring that, uh, introduce that particular two words, uh, step up. You know, the series that has been uh, probably very dear to you because uh, you use that word. and. Uh, you think about it, you actually, as, as trainers, as coaches, you often use this word step up uh, because that's the message you're trying to, uh, let's say, portray. 
uh, to your audience. Uh, you want them to be empowered. You want them to step up. Um, you know, a little bit of, of uh, your story about how the series started and what was your thought behind uh, this, uh, Shankar? Well, when, when I started getting coached, or when I started taking the, the course on business coaching, one of the things that came to mind was how can I help the entrepreneurs and what can I tell them that it will motivate them to do something in their business. And I thought step up was a good word. And that's how the whole series started. But it's not merely stepping up. It consists of four things. Strategies, tactics, evaluations, and principles. All these four are important for you to upskill and progress. So that is a step up series. So if you if you read my newsletters that I currently post, each week will either be on one of these four STEP. And that's how the whole series started. But it's not merely stepping up. It consists of four things. Strategies tactics, evaluations, and principles. All these four are important for you to upskill and progress. So that is a step up series. So if you if you read my newsletters that I currently post, each week will either be on one of these four STEP. One of these, either one week will be evaluation, one week will be tactics, one week will be strategies, some principles, so how do you tell the entrepreneurs that you know how to do your business all right? Great. But certain things that we ignore are these. So that's how the Step Up series started. It's actually a series of four books. So each one, S is a book, T is a book, E is a book, and P is a book. So you will, you will realize over a period of time, maybe a year or so from now, it will be a series of four books that I'll be launching. So part one is already written, part two is underway, and maybe another six months to eight months, part three and four will be done. And it will be a series of four books which can help entrepreneurs. That's how the journey started. Amazing. Uh, you know, for the, for the sake of the audience who are listening in today, I'll strongly recommend, uh, you know, join in the LinkedIn page that Shankarji has, or uh, he's even active on the Facebook. I think you're pretty, pretty much active on all the social media platforms. And uh, we'll try and certainly put the link after this, uh, after the broadcast uh, for the benefit of the audience. Uh, but certainly I would encourage them to subscribe and uh, continue watching, especially the Step Up series. I've, I've started following it. I'm learning a lot and uh, I'm sure the, the audience will as well. Uh, I talk about this whenever I have a trainer on the show and I ask them this question. Where do you see the training and coaching industry move uh, in India? What direction do you see it go? I think in the near future, and when I say near future, I, I look at it as maybe five to seven years. By 2030, maybe, you will probably find India becoming the coach for hub and a hub for training and coaching. It is going to happen. Number one, why do I say this? India's infrastructure is relatively cheaper than the world. Number one, India's labor when i say labor i'm not talking about that you know there's nothing called as low labor high labor for me everything is the same but the amount that an indian coach would normally charge as fees when compared to the people in the west is far lower so it, it's affordable and that's one of the reason why i'm saying india will become the hub number 3 india has got a population which is Nearly 60% of that population is going to be in that age bracket of, let's say, 30, 30, you know, 30, 35, 40, or maybe even lesser, 25 to 40. The most employable age. Indian corporate diaspora doesn't have the facilities to provide employment to everybody. For sure. Now, what will happen? We have Make in India concept coming in. And, and because of that, a lot of people have already started taking up entrepreneurship. Pandemic made it abundantly clear that you really don't need a job to make money. So in this age bracket, when people in the age bracket of 22, 25, 28, 30 start becoming entrepreneurs, they have a lot of inner motivation is there. But what happens to the strategies? What happens to the tactics? 
what happens to the evaluations what happens to the principles you know they need to learn all that and once they do that is when they will be successful in their ventures so with so many startups happening with so much happening i am very very sure that they will need a lot of hand holding guiding coaching mentoring training because when they hire people even those people will need to be trained to step up absolutely that the owners themselves need to be trained to step up they need people to be trained to step up so i think india's future as far as training and coaching is concerned is very very great very great and i'll tell you why also as a trainer three words are important in your life first is pedagogy you know what is pedagogy the art of teaching children mm-hmm. then came andragogy mm-hmm. you know the art of teaching adults adults don't like to be taught they like to learn mm-hmm. and now the third is hutagogy h e u t a g o g y self managed learning and isn't that what we see in the world today with so many lms platforms and other things coming the younger generation wants to learn at their pace at their convenience as per the, their learning style and in a place which is comfortable for them now if this is going to happen you can imagine what the coaching and training industry is in store for now this is where trainers and coaches need to step up if you don't have an lms platform if you don't have online presence you can kiss the world goodbye in terms of what you're doing literally literally so therefore there is a there is a bright future for coaching and training in india according to me exciting times ahead well uh, it, it indeed is and uh, we can actually you know uh, experience that and feel it uh, when even we talk to uh, the inquiries that come to us and uh, there's so much of eagerness there's so much of childlike enthusiasm yes. Yes. when uh, when the hr team tries to con- connect with you uh, with us rather. and uh, that is uh, amazingly displayed through uh, through the inquiries that we get uh, just imagine and- alan mm-hmm. you are where and where am i right now right two to three years back we couldn't even have imagined this no 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 is it that thing absolutely and in fact uh, you know a lot of things are happening online um yes uh you know essentially we all believe and we are firm believers that uh, uh on site face to face training programs make a lot of difference and certainly we all vouch for that but uh, there's no more such thing as a show stopper when it comes to a venue of organizing an event and uh, certainly the post pandemic uh, uh era has taught us that uh, as we are doing it right now it will be hybrid i'm telling you it will be hybrid there will be you cannot replace offline as you said however you can't have everything only offline yes with the with the advent and with the improvement of technology we need to make use of it and if you can provide tools that can help a learner pre learn something and come into your class you'll save that much time and that is what online will help and that is why i'm saying coaching and training industry has got a big 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 boost right so we're talking so much about it we almost kind of advertising the the profession that we are in right. and uh, and it, and it's obviously for some you know valuable purpose uh, that will drive and as i said earlier this show drives in a lot of uh, audience coming from the age group uh, who are in their youth so uh, shankar ji if you had to advise the young aspirants you know there are there are everyone who thinks about being well at least thankfully the days of only being the doctor and engineer is gone is so uh, there's a, there's a much more vibrant uh, sort of uh, uh, wide diaspora of uh, uh, you know opportunities that they search for and that's the beauty of this generation but uh, i think training and development or learning and development is certainly not to be ignored as a career Correct. Correct. so uh, your uh, little advice to the young aspirants who would want to join into this industry you can do what you want whatever you want but remember three things in life number one there is no shortcut to success 
no matter what you do be prepared to put in that effort all the time there is no shortcut to success number 1 number 2 love what you do that's more important when you love what you do the inner motivation to stay with it comes automatically don't take it up because of peer pressure or because somebody else is doing it if you love it do it you know hero honda used to say fill it shut it forget it so i will say love it imbibe it don't forget it and that will help you in your life and the third would be there is no hurdle from the outside you are your biggest catalyst or your biggest hurdle you choose which you wish to be there's nothing known as external hurdle it's all within so if you can be that catalyst from within you will achieve whatever you want in life so this would be my three short and sweet advices to the youth because they are they are going places they can do whatever they want well uh, and you you rightly talked about uh, uh, the young uh, population that we have and the opportunities that they have and the space of learning and development growing just growing yes. uh, well uh, you know this goes out to the the young crowd watching out there if you want a feel to be to aspire for then don't ignore the training and uh, development of the learning and development industry it is That's there true. to stay and not just stay but to to provide for and uh, i think that was free counseling for you right there right here in this show yeah, and and that that was beautifully put i, I wouldn't have uh, we couldn't have asked for a better person to portray it uh shankar ji the you, you know uh, i i've had i had uh, different answers when i asked this question and i'm not going to stop on ans- asking the question because this is a driving force for everyone right, right. every one of us has a person who inspires us an occasion or a situation that inspires us what right. would that one occasion or person be for you for me it is not one there is more than one however to begin with it is my mother she is no more she passed away in 1993 she she taught certain simple lessons i have spent a lot of time with her number one i was with her in our godi for 6 years so my dad says you stuck to her and you you actually sucked all the good qualities she had that's a blessing in this guys isn't it so the first thing that she taught me and why do i look up to her is never ever 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 try to hurt anybody if you can't help someone it's fine but don't hurt anyone she used to say that will be the biggest help you can give to the mankind the first lesson the second lesson when i was failing in my ca journey and you know she was she used to say it's fine shankar you're putting in your effort but very subtly she will add saying that shankar in life when it comes to studies always look up to the people who are scoring more than you and go and talk to them and figure out how they do it probably they'll help you but in life when looking at status of yourself always look at people below you and feel that that gratitude to the divine that the divine has given you what you have you're far 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 comfortable than most of the people in the world and you'll feel that gratitude from within uh, for me these are words of golden you know third she'll always say when someone asks for anything from you don't give dresses don't give money give food again profound words because of all the things in the world of all the things and you you can you can take it in any religion any caste any creed any spirituality wherever food is the only thing human being says enough and once your stomach is full you can't digest it beyond that no matter how tasty the food is is it so she used to always say when i when i die on my death anniversary please poor feed people that's good enough for me don't do any puja nothing 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 
but feed some people they'll bless you for it that is a third lesson and the fourth lesson she gave was if somebody asks you for money and you don't want to refuse it give maybe one tenth or one fifth of what the person has asked and write it off in your mind it is never ever going to come back however it will not hurt your pocket it will not hurt your conscience that you didn't say no to that person the very very simple yet very deep lessons and the second person i admire or look up to is my father he is 89 and the one thing that i've learned from him is discipline even today he wakes up at 5 am in the morning he is up till maybe 11 or 12 in the night yes there are some medical ailments which force him to you know stay awake but you can you can forget the clock if you say somebody works like clockwork precision it is him and that's what i'm learning from him so A lot of people ask me, "Where do you get the time?" You know, some people have not not jokingly but sarcastically asked me as well. Do you only do posts or do you also work? So I said, "Why? Whatever I do, I make time for it. So I do it." And I am not complaining to anybody in this outside world, or you know, going and asking, saying that, "Hey, you feed me." So you have to find the time for it, and that's what I am learning from it. that you have to find the time you have to make time time is eternity time existed before we came time will exist after we go we are passengers in this journey so we have to manage ourselves again comes back to emotional intelligence manage yourself so these two have been the biggest influencers my family the the, the way they supported me when i took the decision to come out of the corporate world hats off so those are the three categories of people i look up to all the time without their support i can't do anything and i'm thankful to the to the divine my wife my daughter my family my brother's family my in-laws everybody so these are some of the people who have influenced me well uh actually kind of uh, made me stump silence for a minute because that <laughs> uh, that's absolutely profound and uh, it summarizes Shankar Vishwanath, you know, you know, in a beautiful way, because where does this product come from? Is something that one would actually uh, want to know, and uh, if one would want to know, the answer was just found in the last five minutes of, of what you just said. So, Shankar Sir, beautifully put, and uh, uh, what a blessing to be having people of, of such uh, uh, such stature around you, and 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 I think. Uh, Uh, it 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 resounds a lot of uh, the personality that you portray a lot of uh, the things that you say and a lot of thing that you write as well so uh, there's no doubt uh, as to where it is all generating from so uh, bless you and your family for for all thank you just the you. one line i would say the will of the divine does not take you where the grace of the divine cannot protect you but do you believe in that will and the grace my father says you need grace to be able to recognize grace and i i strongly believe that i am a surrendered soul so whatever i am doing is the will of the divine it's given by the divine it's of the divine and done for the divine so there's nothing more i can ask for just bask in that glory and keep keep floating wherever that divine will wants to take you will take you so i in fact had a question for you to describe a leader but i'm not going to ask you that question uh, shankar ji you may have had an answer prepared for it probably and the reason <laughs> I'm, uh, the reason i'm not even going to ask you that question is you have already described how a leader must be and uh, if i i do ask that question it turns out to be very silly on my behalf. no no there is there is i'll give you a definition for it certainly okay. and and we'll keep that but uh, that was on a lighter note <laughs> <laughs> but but that was uh, that was, that is how i would define a leader a leader yeah. a complete person a person you know as your father displays discipline uh, absolutely uh, the core uh, you know the core uh, purpose of being a leader 
is uh, to to express discipline and through discipline you actually show a lot to the followers that you have right correct, uh, correct. to the self discipline that you portray correct, correct. Uh, but yes please uh, you, so please just leader you. just like i said shankar there is leader lead by example that is l e is encourage participation from your team Mm-hmm. as a leader if you don't encourage participation the decision making is left to your own self but when you encourage participation your team feels that they need to take the responsibility a accept diversity we talk about we hear and we read a lot of diversity inclusion and all that so doesn't matter who is in your team in fact you know through my corporate journey there have been instances when people were being thrown out of the organization or the corporates wanted to get rid of them for whatever reasons couple of them i told them can i take them in my team and i again again grace i didn't do anything probably they were not fit for that job but this job they were fit for so they excelled in this job again the grace so that is a accept diversity b have an attitude to develop people because that is a leadership quality one must have you should develop it is not training and delivery it is training and development and development takes time isn't it we've heard rahul dravid others talk about the story of the bamboo tree it takes 5 years for it to come out and become 90 feet but does that mean it did not grow for 4 years it was going deep below it was making the root stronger so that the fifth year it can grow up to 90 feet so d allow people to develop e be empathetic towards your team members and everybody around you and r is respect them the more you respect them the more respect you will get from them so for me that's a leader and when i say talk about leaders you see gandhi ji you see mandela ji you see apj abdul kalam sir you see anybody you will find these qualities in them wonderful Well, Shankarji, I think we cannot but uh, end the show with that beautiful <laughs> summary uh, of the Thank word, you. the definition of leader, uh, the way that you have just uh, defined. And uh, it's been wonderful talking to you. For me, the little takeaway that I have from uh, this uh, journey, thirty minutes, the forty minutes that I've spent, has been uh, the fact that uh, you always display positivity. and uh, whatever may be around you uh, the negative circumstances the naysayers but i think you have the capacity to simply uh, you know look beyond and walk forward and that is the beauty of uh, what i can see in a person such as yourself Thank and you. uh, yeah you you know uh, please you you, you had to say something no i wanted to say that if you don't do that you become a sneer <laughs> Read this in one of my my step up series. You right. become susceptible to the negative influence of other people. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Why should you? Why should you? There will be people, no matter what you do, Alan, in life, there will still be people who will talk negative, and they are required. You hear a Simon Sinek or any top leader speak. They talk about that theory of diffusion, that bell curve. There will always be that two and a half percent. who are the lagards and because of the lagards is what the innovations happen so they are required those critics are required for you to develop in life so let them talk that's it you do what is to be done don't worry about anything else intention attention manifestation that's it have an intent ask the divine will to give you the the strength to put that attention and leave it to the divine will to manifest it will happen So this is what I will say finally. <laughs> Thank you. So let us indeed leave it uh, for the divine will to manifest. Yes. And let's have a wonderful time all together. Uh, it's a wonderful world. It's a wonderful life. What yes. have we got to lose but to enjoy? And I think uh, uh, it's been a beautiful time spent tonight. I hope Same. you all as well have uh, enjoyed every minute of what you heard today. Same. Same uh, here. Thank you, thank you, Shankar ji, and uh, thank, thank you and your family uh, for bringing in so much of our energy and love into this world. Thank you, uh, thank you, Alan. Makes, makes a lot of uh, difference when we have such people around you, 
uh, certainly the people around you are blessed and uh, also those who attend your events and uh, who will have the opportunity going forward to attend your events. I was certainly empowered when I met you uh, and there has been no two, uh, two ways of my thoughts uh, in, that, in that sense. But uh, audience, the audience, thank you for being a part of this, uh, this uh, little phase, a little um, uh, podcast that we had tonight. And I encourage you to, as I said in the, in, the, uh, in the part earlier, to do subscribe and follow Shankarji on his social social media uh, handles. And also do subscribe and follow us on this particular channel, uh, which is uh, net, which is a podcast we do for, uh, for the young, but it is for the old as well. And uh, I perhaps shouldn't have even used the word old, but yes, old is gold. So, don't be offended with what I just said. But yes, this is a show for everyone, uh, Ground Zero Everyday Leaders, an event where we talk to leaders such as we did today, uh, Mr. Shankar Vishwanath, who is absolutely a blessed person. Shankarji, thank you very much. You. And to the audience, thank you and namaste. Thank you. Thank you and gratitude, Alan. Pleasure to be with you always. Learned a lot from you and look forward to stay connected. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank And there you go, yet another conversation with a leader on the ground. Absolutely the pleasure of talking to people such as this, because what you achieve from a conversation that you have with people of such attitude, such mindset, is a divine intervention, a divine manifestation, as we heard from Shankarji himself. So friends, stay blessed, keep empowering, we can make a change.